Thank you for downloading this podcast from Emmanuel Church Lurgan. At Emmanuel, our vision is to help rewrite the story of Craigavon, Ireland and the nations with the good news of the Kingdom of God. We hope you enjoy listening to this message. I'm going to move this because the last thing you want me to do is tumble all over, over the place. Um, isn't there great things happening amongst us? Like last, last Wednesday night was beautiful. If you're in the room, like either, either all, the whole time or for sure, but you, you will have noticed and sensed the, the presence of God with us. Like Alpha, the people that are just working really hard and making all of that and the stories of what's coming back of lives being changed, it's beautiful. It's really, really great. People saying, this is my family. This is where I want to be, belong. There's a, a group of people that are starting to gather that are getting baptized on Easter Sunday evening. God is doing great things amongst us. Um, let me start my timer. So over the, over the last few um, weeks from the new year, we've been on our Cultivate series. Last week, we finally arrived into the good soil. Okay, we arrived into the good soil. Um, that, that I have one phrase that could probably sum up the whole 25 minutes that I talked last week. So here's the, the, the one phrase. It says, as we intentionally abide in Jesus, so we were talking about intentionally abiding, aligning our identity, okay? So our identity needs aligned under the love of the Father. And as the Holy Spirit causes issues to arise, let us be ruthless in uprooting the thorns from the soil of our soul so that good fruit can multiply. Um, it's, on the, it's on the screen there, that little, that little phrase, that little quote, um, that you can, you can see it. And last week we can, um, if you imagine we were asking the question, what, what's going on with you? How are you doing? Okay. Um, how are you doing? And this week, we said that we're going to be taking a couple of weeks on the good soil. Th- this week, we're asking the question, how are we doing? So if last week was how are you, it's like looking inward. Today is about how are we doing? What does it look like for us as Emmanuel Lurgan to have a uh, good soil? If you want to put it another way, what is our desire, our imagination, our hope for what this place is? Is and today is significant because new people have joined the family today. Are saying this is this is my patch, and whenever it comes to what's going on in here, I'm responsible for that. Okay, I have a responsibility for what's going on in the soul in, in the soil of my soul. Okay, but whenever it comes to what's going on amongst us, actually all of us have responsibility for that. And it may be that we'd be, we would quite like to sort of pass that responsibility on to a small group of people, pass that on to, to leadership, pass that on to people that have been here for a long time. But actually, the, the biblical principle of this is actually we are all involved in the soil of what is going on. And my question to you this morning, you'll, you'll get to realize I like questions, okay? I don't have many answers, but I have lots of good questions, Okay. Uh, my, my question to you this morning is, um, what's your contribution to the soil of our church? What's your contribution to the soil of our church? And whenever I ask that question, it would be really easy to jump to the practical, tangible things. You could go, I give my time here. Sir, I put a call out for kids workers, and I responded, and I said, I'm going to give my time over um, to serve the kids of our church. You could start to look at the places where we volunteer and the places that we give our, our time, and that is so important, and we say thank you for that. There are people that there are people that this weekend probably should have moved into church. It would have been easier, okay? They've been here all day yesterday. They're here this morning. They're going to be here tonight again. We are so thankful for that. You could be looking at what you, how you give your time. The other practical or tangible one is that you give your money. And we've taught about this. We've unashamedly taught on the principles that are within the Bible that tell us to tithe 10%. 10% of our first fruits over um, to, to God. And whenever I'm saying, what's our contribution to church? You could go, I give my time and I give my money. There we go. 
And you could give me the examples of, of what that is. But my, my question probably goes a little bit beyond what's your, your practical or your tangible con contribution. And my question is, what are you contributing to the culture of who we are? What are you contributing to the soil of who we are? What is your contribution to the soil of this place? Um, there's a little quote by a guy called Peter Drucker that says, Culture eats strategy for breakfast. Culture eats strategy for breakfast. You see, it's not just about what we do, but it's about how we do it. What we do will only take us so far, but how we do it is the bit that really matters because it's not just about doing the Jesus stuff, it's about doing it the Jesus way. And whenever we talk about culture, whenever this morning as we're unpacking what's your contribution to our culture, the question is, uh, th that culture, what I'm talking about is doing it the Jesus way. Because we can do all of the right things and we can have it slick and we can have it polished and it can look really impressive, but are we doing it the Jesus way? Is the culture of who we are doing it the Jesus way? That's, that's below the surface of, of our our heart, of our motivation, of our intentions, of our desires. How are we doing in the soil of our church? Are we doing the Jesus things? Because that's really important. But equally important is that we're doing them the Jesus way. And what's your contribution? I'm going to be really blunt on a, on a Sunday morning. like. So what's your contribution? Our contribution can be really positive, or it can be really negative. Our contribution into the culture and the, the soil of who we are can be really healthy, or it can be toxic. It can be really encouraging, or it can be discouraging. It can be life-giving, or it can be life-stunting. What's your contribution? And it may all depend on what side of the bed you got out of that morning, what we get on any particular day. But what's our contribution that we make into who we are? Who we are as a church. Um, on Monday nights, um, there's a group of us that, that meet for the Tabar Leadership Pathway. Um, Tabar is the, the connection of, of churches that have, have formed around us. And on a Monday night, um, Cheryl Bailey, Susie Moore, and a guy called Ross Hill, who helps lead a 24-7 community in Dublin, um, the four of us facilitate some conversation for, for sort of key leaders across um, to bar. And we, we unpack um, some of the, the, some great questions. There's a great group of people that are involved in that. Some of our staff are involved in it. Some of the leaders within um, church that are leading other organizations are connected in with that. And as a little side note, probably something really important to note, is that this year's content that we're going through, um, which is being used um, 20, over across 24-7 globally, okay? So there's lots of these little cohorts of learning that are happening right across um, the globe. And the content that we're going through at the moment, um, it's been written by Alan Emerson. Most of you will know him. Um, Alan, who helps lead with Chris over in Portadown. Down. And it's really important to acknowledge, not, not to, to get above ourselves, but to acknowledge some of the favor that God has placed on us that we have to steward really, really well. And also that you get to celebrate and be part of some of the stuff that actually we are connected in. Um, but we, we met on we, we met on Monday night, and actually, the, I didn't do it on purpose, but what we were going through is, what is the church? And it was so helpful then for, for unpacking this. So probably if you hear anything that's half decent this morning, okay, I've stolen it off the guys that were on the call, okay? So I'm putting a full disclaimer out, okay, so I don't have to do it every time. I've stolen it off them. That anything that you're probably thinking, oh, that sounds quite good. If you come and talk to me afterwards, it was probably one of the guys in the call that said that, and I've stolen it, okay? But here's the, here's the definition, okay, that we were unpacking. It says, the church is a prayerful family on mission surrendered to the leading of the Holy Spirit. The church is a prayerful family on mission surrendered to the leading of the Holy Spirit. And as we start to think, right, how, how is the, the, the soil of our church doing? It's, it's really important for us to think about, well, what is the church actually meant to do? 
And sometimes we can see that through a lens of what can I get out of church? You know, how did I feel when I, I left the Sunday gathering? You know, did, did it hit the mark for me? And yet this, this definition gives us a, a, a few better handles to try and gauge what's the, the soil like of our church. Prayerful, family, on mission, surrendered to the Holy Spirit. You can see the, uh, Jamie will highlight the four of those across that quote and um, that, that we're going to try and unpack this morning. We're going to try and look through and um, what, what does it look like if, if we're gauging our prayerfulness, if we're, we're, we're gauging our family, if we're gauging it on mission, if we're gauging on how we're surrendered to the Holy Spirit, how is the soil um, doing this morning? So how prayerful are we as a community of people? Um, listen to this statement. There's, t- there's two quotes here from Pete Gregg, okay? It says, I'm actually not into prayer. I'm into Jesus. So we talk. I don't believe in the power of prayer. I believe in the power of God. I'm actually not into prayer. I'm into Jesus. So we talk. I don't believe in the power of prayer. I believe in the power of God. Our prayerfulness connects us and centers us upon Jesus. It is everything to the feet of Jesus and everything in the name of Jesus. Our prayerfulness is connected to our awareness of his presence. And you know what happens in in a prayerful culture? In, in a place where we're saturated in prayer, it raises our expectation of what God can do. As we become more and more aware of his presence, that he is in the room with us, it raises our expectation of what he can do. Uh, Pete goes on to say, um, we are qualified for Christian service by our praying, not our preaching, by our desire to worship him, and not our workload on his behalf, by knowing Jesus personally, and not just by knowing a lot of interesting things about him. If you lose God's presence, you lose everything. But if you know his presence, you already have everything you will ever need. We are called to be a people of prayer. We are called to be a people that prioritize his presence. We believe in the power of God. And it's through prayer that we're saturating our lives in his presence. It's through prayer that we're saturating our church in his presence. It's through prayer that we're saturating our island and the nations in his presence. Good soil is saturated in the presence of God. We want to know what good soil of our church looks like? It is saturated in the presence of God, and His presence is directly connected to our prayerfulness. Second Chronicles seven fourteen. If my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. Our prayerfulness is directly connected to his presence. And you know what else our prayerfulness does? It reveals our hunger. Our prayerfulness reveals our hunger. Our prayerfulness as a group of people is a clear indicator of how hungry we are for the presence of God. It reveals what our appetite is. Are we hungry for his presence? Are we desperate for his presence? When we look at the the soil, the culture of our church, how prayerful are we? I am so thankful for the legacy of prayer in this place. People in this room that right at the very beginning of Emmanuel's journey have prayed through and seen this this church under the leading and the guiding of the Holy Spirit come to be. For people that at at times of real challenge and difficulty have, have, 
have went and, and have prayed and fasted and have called on others to do the same, to, to carry us through difficult um, circumstances. There has been rhythms of 24-7 prayers. There's been the 100 hours of prayer. We have a prayer room established as part of our physical being, our building given space over um, to prayer. We have the bonfire nights or what we now call the revival fire nights where we go out around the city and we pray. We've had road trips happening around the island over the years to pray for this place. We have a, an amazing legacy of prayer and it, it, it's in that legacy of prayer that we, we step into and that we're living in and we're seeing even the favor of God upon us because of the prayers that have been prayed. But what is our prayerfulness like right now? And what's our contribution to that culture of prayerfulness? What are we sowing for a future generation? What are we sowing for a future generation? You hear it time and time again, even from people standing here going, actually, I am a product of the prayers of the people that have gone before me. I'm a product of the prayers of the people that have gone before me. How are the people that are coming after us being formed by our prayers? What are we passing on? Prayer is not a tick box. It's not out of religion. It's out of desire and desperation. Desire and desperation. What is our contribution to the prayerfulness of, of this place? You know, and there's lots of organized ways that we can get involved in prayer. We've got our, our corporate prayer every Wednesday, other Wednesday night. We've got in our life groups that we give time to pray that you could come to the 6.30 prayer meeting on a, on a Thursday morning. You could take an hour in the prayer room. There's lots of ways that we can get connected in. How, how are you involved in the regular rhythms of prayer in this place that add to the prayerful culture? And you have these organized places, but then you also have the organic. It, it, it's the praying in your home. It's the praying with your family. It's, it's sitting around your table and just it, for a moment, centering yourself on the presence of God. It's the, oh, the, the, that, that is terrible what's going on in your life. Can I pray for you in the here and now? Not a, oh, I'll pray for you whenever I remember later on sometime if I do remember. It's a, can I, can I pray for you here? Can I believe for God to step into your situation now? It's as we gather, as, as you lead teams within our, our, our church and the kids team or our youth team or whatever environment that you're in, of saying, can we just pause and pray that we welcome the Holy Spirit into this space? That you're the person that has the courage to go here, can, can we pray? Could we pray? Small things, little things, but yet all of them begin to add up and combine it, that, that contribute to a culture of prayerfulness? What is your uh, contribution to our prayerfulness? Because we could really do with you involved because it's better to gather. It's better um, to gather. So we are called to be a prayerful, but we're called to be a prayerful family, okay? And I get that family can be a very loaded word. Okay, because your experience and your understanding and your expectation of what family is could be very, very different um, from mine. Just, just as a little disclaimer, I, I had my circles in the right place, but there's been something that has happened in the crossover of the PowerPoint. Okay, my, my circles were beautiful, all aligned over all of those words. But somewhere in the, in the switchover, so it is, um, we, we've, we've lost the circles, okay? But you get the idea, right? So we're, we're, a, we're a family, okay? We're a family, um, a, a prayerful family. How are we doing as family? And family's a biblical word, okay? We, 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 we can't get away that that's what God is calling us into. He's calling us into a family. And yes, it will create all different types of imagination and expectation for people. But, but God is calling us into a, a family, and this amazing, wonderful group of people that stand in front of me or sit in front of me this morning, we are drawn together under one thing, and it's, it's the truth and the lived experience that Jesus is Lord. That's why we've gathered into this place. We've got, we're going, actually, I've came to a place in my life where I believe that Jesus is Lord, and I'm surrendering everything I have under His Lordship. 
And as I do that, we get drawn together to walk out and work out that truth in our lives. We get to do this together. We get to do it as family. And where else would you get such an eclectic group of people drawn into one space, but not just to share a building or to share a row of seats, but to share our lives and to become interdependent upon each other, to support and to serve each other and to serve with each other. We are called to be a a family. And this is the beauty of the church, okay? That Jesus has repeated to us is that it's it's our oneness that is a witness. It's, It's our unlikely oneness. People from all walks of of life and different backgrounds and different experiences that are brought together as one family. And it's our oneness that is a witness because of the way we love each other, because of the depth and the commitment of love that we have to each other, the world will know that we are His. Jesus says that the the, the way that the the world is going to see the, the clear indicator is actually by the way that we love each other. It is by the way that we love each other. Our oneness is our witness. And yet, if you look at what we're trying to do, of this amazing group of people from all walks of life trying to to be joined and formed into one family, of course it's going to be difficult. Of course at times it's going to be hard. Because things that are beautiful cost something. Things that are beautiful cost something. And the the church is is called to be a place of belonging. It is a, a, a welcome and an open door for the stranger to come in amongst us. It's not an exclusive group. There is an open door into our family. And whenever it's going right, it is powerful and it's beautiful. But because we're called to be so invested and so entwined, then the stakes are higher. So whenever this goes wrong, it goes really wrong. And it will go wrong at times because we're human. And in those moments, it can hurt and it can wound really, really deeply. Can I say this morning that if you have been hurt by the church, hurt by the family, hurt by the church generally, or hurt by the church here, can we say that we're sorry? That as leaders, as friends, as family, sometimes we can do and we can say the wrong things. And if you're here and actually... As I'm speaking, you know, actually, I've got some stuff going on that I just, I haven't dealt with, and I've tried to deal with it, but it just keeps coming to the surface. Would you talk to us? Because we we don't want you to sit in your pain any longer, and we want to walk on a journey with you into healing. Our love for one another, our unity, our togetherness is vitally important. It shows the world that we are His. It is into our unity that God commands a blessing, that His favor rests upon us. It is the Spirit of God that holds us as a family and that we are bound together as a body. We are baptized into one Spirit. God inhabits the space between us. God inhabits the space between us between us. How is the space between us? You see, whenever we look at the, at the soil of who we are as a church, how we're doing as a family, how are the relationships between us? How is the space between us? Is there a sweetness there? Is there a kindness? Is there grace? Do we champion, encourage, and prefer each other? And maybe some of the more difficult things, is there any unforgiveness in the space between us? 
Is there any offense or grudge that you are holding on to? Are we holding a critical attitude toward anyone? You see, dealing with this stuff is really, really important because actually as we hold on to unforgiveness, it eats away at our soul. So for you individually, dealing with unforgiveness is really, really important. And then you, you may think and go, actually, this is just between me and that person, not impacting anybody. I've got my reasons and they're legitimate. And you may feel this is not impacting on anybody else. Can I suggest that if you hold on forgiveness, if you hold on forgiveness, then we hold on forgiveness because we are a family because we are a family. God dwells in the spaces between us. Our gospel is a gospel of forgiveness. The sacrifice Jesus made, this perfect sacrifice as he was dying on that cross, it redeemed the whole world, but it bought our forgiveness. It bought my forgiveness. Forgiveness is central to our gospel. And we do hear these for words from Jesus. Mark 6, 14 to 15. For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. They are strong words from Jesus. They are strong words from Jesus. And I can't find another way around this. In many ways, I wish I could. But it appears that unforgiveness stunts the growth of the gospel in my life. Unforgiveness stunts the growth of the gospel in our lives. And I get that actually forgiveness can be really difficult. I don't want to minimize your pain. It could be a journey that we, we need to walk through and we make ourselves available to help in whatever way that we can. But it appears that this gospel that brought forgiveness into our lives does not allow us the option of unforgiveness. God dwells in the space between us. And as we wrap this up very quickly, we are a family. We are a prayerful family, and we are on mission, okay? Um, the Matthew 28, verses 18 to 20, the Great Commission, then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. We have this amazing gospel. This amazing message of Jesus, a message of hope in a hopeless world, a message of peace whenever it's a fraught and it's an anxious time. It's a message of security whenever everything feels chaotic. It's a message of forgiveness, our souls right with God, a message of life coming after death that changes eternity and it changes the here and now. It's a message of belonging, of love by a father, I'm part of a family, and we get to invite people into this. We get to invite people into this and teach them the Jesus way of living. And what I want you to see this morning is that our, our mission has a go in it. If we're trying to figure out how are we doing as a church, our mission has a go in it. The Gospel of Mark says, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. There is a go in our mission our mission involves movement. Everyone, every day, everywhere, going into your world, going into your world and bringing this message and this hope of Jesus. But not only going into your world, going into the world, the whole world, into all the nations. 
See, amongst us, can I just highlight a couple of things that have been happening over the last couple of years? Because sometimes these happen so subtly that we don't fully recognize or pay attention. Um, the, the last while, David and Cheryl Bailey have been amongst us. They've been serving in the south of Ireland for over a decade, um, involved in, in ministry and supporting churches, connected in with OAM. And they're back up here and they're regrouping and they're retraining. But the heart and the desire is still, we want to get back to the south. And if you've been talking to them, they're they're desperate at any point to get back to the south of Ireland to plant churches. Our our mission involves movement. And the movement involves sacrifice. As they navigate this with their three boys. You think back to five years ago and people from this room left to go and see a, a, a church established in Portadown. And yes, it's only a couple of miles down the road. But actually, as you start into a little bit of a fledgling community of people, there's nowhere to hide and you have to throw your shoulder into something and it's less comfortable. And people moved into makeshift buildings over the last few years and we're so thankful for what God is doing and the progress that's happening even with the new building in Portadown. God is on the move. You think of of six years ago when a bunch of our our 20-somethings started to get a heart for Craigavon. They started to prayer walk around the center of um, this city. Uh, And and something happened within them. Like a desperation of that we need to do something. And and Cara got formed. A a, a group of people living at the gospel out in the brokenness of one of the most deprived areas within our country. On the 29th of March, we've, we've got revival fires, old bonfire nights. We're going to be taking prayer across the city. We'll go to Portadown, we'll go to Cara, but you know what? We'll travel not 0.7, I'm relying on Phil, Phil told me, not 0.7 miles to Shalom. This outpost of the kingdom of God in North Lurgan, in a place where you wouldn't expect it. And people in here are supporting and encouraging and getting alongside this this beautiful community. But they're feeling the impact of Shelley and Francis, who God had called to Dublin to help establish a work there. There's movement in our mission. Our mission involves movement. And imagine if this beautiful community at the right beside Kilwilkie Estate in Lurgan feeds on our watch. This mission involves movement. We'll go to Mournview with Willie and Farah. We'll go into Warrenstown with Ian and Jennifer Bingham, where they're being a practical and prayerful um, representation of the kingdom in those places. We'll go and pray with them on Wednesday night. But our mission involves movement. And the desire would be not that we turn up one night in the year, but actually that some people go, actually, this is where I'm going to, this is where I'm going to serve. This is where I'm going to, to give. It's probably not the best idea on your second preach to try and encourage people to leave. It's not going to reflect very well. But maybe with how God views the church, it does. Maybe with how God views the church, it does. That actually our mission involves movement. Movement. Whenever we were away with the, um, the Tabar leaders um, a couple of weeks ago, there was a, a prophetic word that came through, a prophetic image of a set of scales, old-time scales. I would have no idea what they looked like, but old-style scales, okay? And the scales were weighted and weighed in the north, okay? Most of the weight was placed in the north. Uh, and the, the picture that was seen, it was someone that wasn't in the gathering but had been praying for us and felt it, it was important for us to, to hear and share. The picture was the hand of God placing his hand onto the side of the scales that was in the south and of bringing balance. And that's beautiful. That, that, like, that makes my heart pound. But the reality is that that's going to mean some people move. That's going to mean a reallocation of funds and resource. That's going to mean that some people in this room catch a fire in their belly for what God is doing in a community in the south of Ireland and say, I'm in. I'm going. Our mission involves movement. Let's wrap this up. Where's Patty? 
Paddy's going to come up. Oh, there he is. He's waving at me. C- can, you, c- can we close our eyes and just, even what Lauren started us with, of just saying, Holy Spirit, we just want to hear from you. We want to hear from you, Holy Spirit, of what you want to say to us. Maybe you're being challenged on all of these things. Maybe it's just, maybe it's just one. <laughs> maybe it's none. That's okay. But Holy Spirit, what are you wanting to say to me today? Is it about my contribution into the prayerfulness of who we are as a group of people? Where can I get involved into the regular rhythms of prayer, knowing that prayer is directly connected to your presence? Is it about the family? Is God talking to you about the space between us? Is it about the mission? That the mission involves movement. And all of this is surrendered to the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, even now in this moment, what are you looking to do and say in my life? We're going to just take a few moments just to respond. Um, Again, right, I'm trying to get us that it's normal for us to get people to pray for us, okay? So at any point while we sing, slip up to the front if you want somebody to pray for you. It can be what we've talked about. It can just be stuff going on in your life that you would just love someone to stand with you for. It can be big or it can be small. Make available of us. Some of our elders and our staff are about. They'll, they'll join in. They'll, you'll not be standing here for long. Just Just come and let someone pray for you. Maybe that someone beside you, you just want to pray with them or you want to respond quietly or actually you want to use the song that Patty's leading us in to respond but is that okay? Can we, can we get familiar with the, the movement? It's going to take some movement it's going to take us feeling uncomfortable at times let's stand together and just say Holy Spirit, whatever you want to say whatever you want to do amongst us we give this space and time to you these few moments at the end of our, of our time together and say have your way We hope you enjoyed listening to this podcast. For more information about our church and all that we do, please visit our website at emmanuel-church.co.uk.